actually when I first went to Guam, uh, seagrasses there was like a new world. You know, I, I was raised, was born and raised here, and uh, I was so familiar with the delicate uh, halophila. And the first seagrass I saw there was one meter high, and it, it's like another world. So this is one of the very large seagrass uh, and halus, just from a top view. Now, Micronesia is a huge area. That's why we su I superimposed the, uh, the U.S. over it. From Palau to Guam up here, Saipan all the way up to the Northern Islands. You have the Federated States of Micronesia and the Marshall Islands, um, all within this area. And when we consider seagrasses within this area, there's 10 species. And this is quite abundant when you consider the Philippines um, has a total of 16. Uh, Papua New Guinea has 12. Um, the Ryukyu Islands have about 10 species. Korea only has five. Um, but of course, Australia got 24 species. It's another world. And here I'm talking about just 12 genera throughout the seagrass family and 60 species. So when we talk about the seagrass species in the islands, we only have seven genera. And, and these uh, seven genera would also apply to Papua New Guinea, to the Philippines. They just have more species, mainly of halophila, uh, various species. Now I'm going to show you photos of these uh, various genera, but if we look at the, this just artificial key, there is only one seagrass that has a woody stem, and that's this thalassodendron. It's very rare. It's only found in Palau, but when it's found there, it can uh, cover an area about two kilometers uh, two kilometers long in, in um, on underwater reef areas. Another seagrass, Syringodium, is the only cylindrical seagrass. And this is a, one of the favorite foods for rabbit fish in that area. Um, one time I went to Palau and I wanted to look at the gut contents of the rabbit fish. The simplest way was not to spear it. Uh, just go to the market and wait there. And they will bring in uh, these fish and I'll simply take the guts. Then I can give another person <laughs> the fish. I'll keep the gut. And I almost found 100% this syringodium, cylindrical one, which makes complete sense. The, the thing is so narrow that the fish just, just eats this <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> Then you have halophila, which we have here, so which is also distinct. And halus is that large one that grows, uh, the leaves grow uh, one and a half meters long. Um, it goes at least about probably one meter deep too because it's almost impossible to pull up. You need a shovel to get this. But it's always recognizable because it has these black, stiff bristles. And these bristles are the remnants of the leaves. And from these bristles, you can make uh, uh, fish nets. This is what they do in Yap. Uh, the Lacia, Halodulae, and Cymodosia look pretty much alike. In the case of the Lacia, if you look at the rhizome, the runners, they have little grooves in it. And you don't even have to see it. You could feel it. Halodulae and Cymodosia has very smooth rhizome. But in the case of Halodulae, they have little points on the tips. They only have three veins. Cymodosia has several. Um, this is the thalassodendron I was talking about. Um, I thought I only found one um, stand in Palau, on Kaingo Atoll, 
But as I mentioned, uh, they flew over the area just north of Kayango Atoll, and they found this whole sh area of the Lacedendron. Now, this is very unique in that they always seem to grow near coral reefs like this. Uh, I don't know how many of you know Chuck Berklin <laughs> took this uh, photo when we were in, on Kayango in January of uh, 1976. And that was the f uh, first record of the thalassodendron in Micronesian area. But this particular um, seagrass is unique in that when it's pollinated, um, they have a separate male flower, separate female flower. Uh, when the uh, female flower is fertilized, the, it, the seed germinates directly on the plant. And then it breaks off or just um, goes prostrate and continues on, I mean, another plant. In other words, it grows directly on it and it can't break down. This is the cylindrical one, Syringodium, Icidifolium. There's another species in the Atlantic. We have uh, two different halophila, minor, and we separate this from the other because um, the cross veins, we have eight or less. Ovalis, it's not a very good picture of ovalis, but it has about 12 or to 24, the cross veins. They have the midrib and the cross veins. Some people consider minor as, and even, um, off in the Hawaiiana as a sub uh, variety of ovalis. And this is the Anhalis acaroides. And as you can see, this is the female flower here. It's like an accordion. This particular plant grows in the intertidal area. At high tide, it unravels. The flower goes to the surface. Um, the another plant will be on the side. It's a male plant. If it's a male plant, it could be a female plant. But if it's a male plant, its flower also will go to the surface, uh, surface and it will fertilize the female plant. Uh, these are very young anhalis. Um, what we did was um, we found a whole bunch of them uh, producing flowers and seeds. And the seed pods uh, are, are pretty big um, with about 8 to 12 uh, like a kernel of corn in it, and people eat it. And what we did was we brought it back, and we simply uh, brought it back in wet cheesecloth in a Tupperware, and put it into our aquarium, although we have it in Guam. And um, this middle one is about 10 weeks old. The Lacea hemphrichii is the most common one found from Palau, or you can, you can go further west to the Philippines, all the way to the Marshall Islands. And in the Marshall Islands, this is the only seagrass you have, Thalacia. No, no other seagrass has been found, even Halophila. And I'm sure Halophila is there, but no one has found it yet. Cymodocia, Rotundata. As I mentioned, you have the very smooth rhizome here. Halodially, supposedly smooth, it's not too clear here. But um, this can be recognized again because the leaves have only three veins running down. These are circular beds of Inhalus acaroides. Um, this is right below our marine lab um, at the University of Guam. Actually, I should say right below, it's diagonally more toward the river because this grows mostly toward the river area.